In this video, we're going to focus on factoring trinomials, particularly in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where the leading coefficient is not 1. So we're going to go over some easy examples at first, and then towards the end of the video, we're going to go over a few harder examples when you have to deal with large numbers, particularly when c is very large. So let's begin. Let's start with 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So if you know how to factor this, feel free to pause the video and try it yourself. Now the first thing we're going to do is multiply the first number and the last number. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Now you want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 5. So it can't be 2 and negative 3 because if you add them you get negative 1. But it's going to have to be negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, but negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the middle term, the negative 5x, with negative 6x plus 1x. Negative 6x plus 1x is negative 5x. And so we haven't changed the value of this expression at this point. So we need to factor by grouping at this point. In the first two terms, what can we take out? What's the GCF, the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor is 2x. So 2x squared divided by 2x, that is going to equal x. And negative 6x divided by 2x, that's negative 3x. Or no, that's actually just negative 3. I take that back. All we could do at this point for the last two is take out a 1 because there is no GCF and so we're just going to have x minus 3 on the inside. If these two are the same then you're on the right track so let's factor out x minus 3. Now what's going to be in the next parentheses is going to be what's on the outside the 2x and the 1 so it's going to be 2x plus 1 and so that's how you can factor a trinomial whenever the leading coefficient is not 1. So let's try another one 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. So let's multiply 6 by negative 5, the first and the last two numbers. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. Now what two numbers multiply to negative 30 but add to 13? Well, let's make a list. If we divide negative 30 by 1, we're going to get negative 30. If we divide it by 2, we'll get negative 15. If we divide it by 3, we'll get negative 10. 4 doesn't go into it, but if we divide it by 5, we'll get negative 6. Notice that 2 and 15, they differ by 13. 2 plus negative 15 is negative 13. So if we make it negative 2 and plus 15, it works. Negative 2 times positive 15 is negative 30, but negative 2 plus 15, that's positive 13. So let's replace the middle term with negative 2x plus 15x. The order in which you write it doesn't matter. It's going to work out the same way. Now, in the next step, we're going to factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, let's take out the GCF, which is 2x. So 6x squared divided by 2x is 3x. And negative 2x divided by 2x, that's negative 1. Now, what's the GCF between the last two terms, between 15x and negative 5? This is going to be positive 5. If we take out 5, 15x divided by 5, that's 3x. And negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. So we can see that we have a common term 3x minus 1, which means we're on the right track. So let's write the common term 3x minus 1. And inside the next parentheses, we're going to put 2x plus 5. And so this is how you factor 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. It's 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 5. Try this one. 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can get this one correct. Now, the first thing I would do is look for a GCF, something that we could take out. Notice that 2, 4, and 6 are all even numbers. We can divide each number by 2. So let's begin by factoring out a 2. So it's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3. 
So the link coefficient is 1. So if we multiply 1 and negative 3, we're going to get negative 3. And so what two numbers multiply to negative 3 but add to the middle term negative 2? This is going to be negative 3 and 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So let's replace the middle term with negative 3x plus 1x. So we're going to factor out an x from x squared minus 3x. So if we take out an x, x squared divided by x, that's x. Negative 3x divided by x, that's negative 3. And for the last two terms, we're simply going to take out a 1. And so we're just going to get x minus 3. It's going to be the same. So we can see that we have a common term, x minus 3. So that's going to be on that's going to be right here. And then outside of that, we have an x and a plus 1. So let's put that in the second parentheses. And this 2, we need to carry it over here. So this is going to be the answer. 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. So if you can, um, look for the GCF. Factor it out, because it's going to make the problem a lot easier. So now let's try a harder example. Let's say if we have this problem, 3x squared minus 29x minus 240. How would you factor it? So we know we have to multiply 3 and negative 240. What's 3 times negative 240? 3 times negative 240. Actually, let me write this in the middle. 3 times negative 240, that's equal to, well, 3 times 24 is 72, so this should be negative 720. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to 720 but add to negative 29. So how can we do that? And how can we do that without a calculator? So what I would do is break down 240 into smaller numbers. We could break it down into 24 and 10. And 24, we can break that into 6 and 4. 10, we could break that into 5 and 2. And the 6, we can break that into 3 and 2. And the 4 can be broken down to 2 and 2. So the prime factors are 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 5, and 2. So what we need to do now is make a list of numbers that multiply to 720 or negative 720 and add to negative 29. So let's start with a small number like 2. Half of 720 is negative 360. Now we know that 3 goes into it which this is going to be 240. Now, 4 goes into it as well, because there's at least two 2's here. So, if we that's going to be 4. And then to find out what remains, multiply the other prime factors. 5 and 2 makes 10. Times 2, that's 20. Times 3, that's 60. Times 3, that's 180. So, 4 times 180 is 720. So now the next two numbers that we can use, let's use a, a 6. Actually, before we do that, let's use 5. 5 is the next number. So if we take out a 5, what we have left over is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16 times 3 is 48. 48 times 3, that's going to be 144. Now, 5 and 144, they differ by a huge number. That's 139. So we need to get a difference of 29. So instead of going to 6, let's jump to a much higher number. Let's jump to 10, which covers the 5 and 2. So 10 times 24 times 3, that's 720. So if we take out a 10, 24 and 3, that's going to be 72. So we need a much bigger number than 10. Let's try 24. So if we take out a 24, what remains is 3 and 10, which is 30. So here, the difference is less than 29. So we need a number that's between 10 and 24. So let's try 5 and 3. 5 and 3 is 15. 
So what remains is going to be, let me put that in purple, it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And then also times 3, which is 48. So that's negative 48. 15 times negative 48 is, uh, that's 33. But that's negative 33, so that's too much. So we need something else. Negative 33, though, it's close to negative 29. So that's a good thing. Let's try 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. And what we have left over, 5 times 3 is 15, times 3, that's 45. So that's going to be negative 45. So 16 times negative 45, that's negative 240. But 16 plus negative 45, and that adds up to negative 29. So we have the numbers that we need. So let's go ahead and replace negative 29x with negative 45x and plus 16x. So now, let's factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, let's take out the GCF, which is 3x. 3x squared divided by 3x is x, and negative 45x divided by 3x is negative 15. So in the last two terms, let's take out a 16. 16x divided by 16 is just x, but what's 240 divided by 16? So we know 240 is 24 times 10. And 24, that is 6 times 4, and, 5, and 10 is 5 times 2. 16 is 4 times 4, but one of the 4s I'm going to write it as 2 times 2. So we can cancel a 4, and we can cancel a 2. So we have 6 times 5, which is 30, and a 2 on the bottom, so 30 divided by 2 is 15. So what that means is that 240 divided by 16 is 15. And we could probably see it's going to be 15 because this number is 15. So we have the common term x minus 15. And then what remains on the outside, we have the 3x, and we have the 16. So that's how you can factor this expression. It's x minus 15 times 3x plus 16. Let's try one more example. Let's try uh, 2x squared plus 15x minus 108. So let's multiply 2 and 108. 2 times 108, that's going to be negative 216. And if we break down 108 into other numbers, 108, that's 12 times 9. And the 12 can be broken down into 4 and 3, whereas 9 can be broken down to 3 and 3. And 4 can be broken down to 2 and 2. So we know that 2 and 108, they're too far apart. So let's jump to a higher number. Let's say 9. So if we take out a 9, what remains is the 12 and the 2. 12 times 2 is 24. But notice that these two, they differ by 15. So if we make it negative 9 and plus 24, 24 times uh, negative 9, that's negative 216, but they add to positive 15, so that's going to work. So let's replace 15x squared with 24x and negative 9x. So if we take out a 2x, 2x squared divided by 2x, that's x, 24x divided by 2x is 12. And if we take out a negative 9, negative 9x divided by negative 9 is just x. Negative 108 divided by negative 9 is most likely positive 12. And you can check that with your calculator. So if we take out the x plus 12, what's going to be in the other parentheses is 2x minus 9. And so that's how you can factor it.